Okay, so in the last video, I talked about how I think that Ezekiel 40 through 48 might actually be describing a heavenly temple. And um, I talked about um, verses 38 through 43 and how it's describing an ascension of some kind. And um, so now I want to talk about a few of the other things that make me think that possibly we're talking about a heavenly temple and, and where Ezekiel was actually shown the mechanisms where people would ascend up. Um, but also I noticed that um, the meanings of these words, the meanings of, um, for example, the word Zadok and the, the word Levi, are really interesting because the word Zadok, when it says in, in verse 46, Ezekiel 40, verse 46, it says in the chamber whose prospect is toward the north is for the priests, the keepers of the charge of the altar. These are the sons of Zadok, and that means righteousness. So these are the sons of righteousness among the sons of Levi. And, the, and Levi means joined to. And then it says right after that, which come near to the Lord. So um, the meanings of these words, I think, are really important. And I think that possibly, and just um, consider the possibility that these ancient texts, which were written, actually, some of these texts were written thousands of, year, of years ago. And we don't even really know how old some of these texts are. But some of the texts in the Old Testament have been proven to be thousands upon thousands of years old. Consider, just, just consider the possibility that these ancient, ancient texts were written in the future and put into time, back into time so that we would have this information and that the words themselves that are being used to describe that Israel itself are actually referring to groups of people that are being removed off of the earth and that it's not necessarily referring to the land that we nowadays associate with Israel. So we know that there's a country called Israel, right? But we also know that that country didn't exist prior to 1947. But we know that there's a place called Damascus, and we know that there's all these places that are named after these places in the Bible. These, these names in these ancient texts, there are actual cities that exist that have been named after that. But consider, consider the fact that in the United States, we have cities that are named after the original places in Europe. So just consider, please, the possibility that these places in the Middle East have been named after the names in the ancient texts themselves. Just consider that possibility is all I'm saying. I'm not saying that's factual. I'm just saying just consider it. Just consider the possibility that Israel is something much bigger than just the people that are living in that country right now that it actually refers to something that is much bigger than that. Okay, that's all I'm saying. And let me show you what I mean. When you look at the meanings of these words, and I've shown in some of my older videos that, for example, Matthew 24, when it says, let those that be in Judea flee into the mountains, the word Judea actually means, um, he shall be praised. So you can read that, let those who be he who shall be praised, B 
be saved by the flight by the carrying away and I've shown that in my other videos please 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 look at the links below this video in the description box I go into detail I show you what the words mean I show you in the concordance what they mean so in Ezekiel 40 I'm just asking that you consider the possibility that this is talking about a heavenly temple that is going to return to the earth now I'm going to show you some more evidence here that that may very well be what this is. Um, the word temple in Ezekiel 41 verse 1 um, is hakel, and it means palace, temple, hall, or nave, sanctuary. So again, it's not exclusively referring to a rebuilt Jerusalem temple, okay? So I just wanted to point that out. And in Ezekiel 40, we're talking about a house. We're talking about a dwelling place. It's called a bayith, I think it is. Right here, a bayith, a dwelling place, a shelter. Um, and then in um, Ezekiel 43:16, it gives the measurements for the altar, and it's a 12 by 12. It says 12 cubits long and 12 broad. So it's 12 by 12. So remember, this kind of goes along with what we were told in Revelation 21, when it said that the temple was um, it was 12,000. The city was 12,000 furlongs, and the wall was 144 cubits. So um, that is 12,000 times. Remember, it was it was referring to the the people themselves. He said, remember, he said, we're measuring the people inside. So 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes is 144,000. So. Um, 12, 12 times 12 is 144. So again, we have 12 by 12. And so in Ezekiel, it's saying that the altar, the altar is also 12 by 12. So could that be another reference to the people themselves? Um, and then I, um, we have more references to the ascension here in Ezekiel 43, 26, and 27. It says, seven days they shall purge. The word is kafar, which means be covered, make atonement, make reconciliation. So they shall, be co they shall cover or make atonement the altar and purify it. And they shall consecrate themselves or be filled and when these days are expired, it shall be that upon the eighth day and so forward, the priests shall make your burnt offerings. And again, this is Ola, which means ascent, stairway. The priests shall ascend upon the altar and your peace offerings, or the shalem, which means peace, requital, which comes from shalom, which means make safe. So it's saying, um, seven days they will purge, and on the eighth day they will ascend upon the altar and be made safe, and I will accept you, saith the Lord God. So again, to me that sounds like we're talking about some kind of ascension into the temple of God. Um I just wanted to point this out as a side note that when you see the word uncircumcised, the word itself in Ezekiel 44 verse 9 is arel, and it means unharvested. And remember that um, we're told all throughout the text that the time of the harvest is coming. So when the wheat and the chaff will be separated, the chaff will be bound Take note of that. I've, I've pointed it out in some of my other videos as well. The chaff are not taken. The chaff are bound. They're bound. And the wheat are taken into the barn, into the temple. So um, that represents the harvest, the taking of the wheat into the barn. 
That's the harvest. So in Ezekiel 44 verse 9 when it says, Thus saith the Lord God, No stranger uncircumcised in heart nor uncircumcised in flesh shall enter into my sanctuary. It's saying, No stranger unharvests. That is literally what it means. Uncircumcised, the word is eril, and it means unharvested. No stranger who is not harvested, meaning they have not been taken to the temple, will not enter the sanctuary. So if you haven't been harvested, you're not going to enter the sanctuary. So again, that's just a reference saying it's referencing the wheat and the chaff. The wheat are being harvested. And those that are not harvested are not coming into the sanctuary. Those that are not harvested are not the wheat. They're the chaff. They're, they've been bound on the earth. Then notice that the word for land also is aretz. And that word aretz also means the whole earth. So is it saying in Ezekiel 45 verse 1, Moreover, when ye shall divide the lot, well, when ye shall divide by lot the earth for inheritance, the whole earth, just consider that Israel might be something bigger than just the land that is called itself Israel. That there's something larger going on here. And that Israel actually represents the people that are being saved off the earth. I'm just asking you to consider that. And it says, moreover, when you shall divide by lot the whole earth for inheritance. Could that be what it's saying? And then in, 40, in 45 verse 8 it says, In the whole earth shall be his possession in Israel, and my princes shall no more oppress my people, and the rest of the earth shall they give to the house of Israel according to their tribes. Is this symbolic? Is what I'm saying. This word Israel, is it symbolic for something larger? Now, look at this, because this is really interesting. This is in Ezekiel 45. It says, this is 45 verse 1, After he brought me again unto the door of the house, and behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. Okay, the house is what he was measuring in verse 40. The house, the temple, that may very well be, may very well be the temple in heaven that returns to the earth. Because remember, Revelation 21, again, the temple, the heavenly Jerusalem, the holy city returns to the earth. The whole earth, the whole world sees the Son of Man, remember? Sees Ezekiel was called the Son of Man. Sees the Son of Man coming out of the sky, returning to earth. It sees holy Jerusalem. It sees the holy city of heaven returning to the earth. It sees the bride returning to the earth. But look at this. Here it's saying that out of the house, which may very well be the heavenly temple, out of the house came, came water. And the waters issued out toward the east country and go down into the desert and go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be healed. What I thought was amazing about this is that in Revelation 21, 1, it says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Isn't that weird, right? Why would God not want there to be a sea? That's not what it's saying. It's saying there wasn't a sea. When, when the holy city came back down to the earth, there wasn't a sea. But then guess what? God replenished the sea. And that's what it's saying in Ezekiel 45, 2 through 9. That's what it seems like to me that it's saying. That Ezekiel is describing a heavenly temple. It's returning to the earth. And that temple of God is going to pour water out of it and replenish water onto the earth. 
I'm out of time, so I'm going to have to start the next part here.